We're going to be finishing up chapter 19 today, the second half of our chapter on speciation. And we're going to start by talking about how we visualize the rate at which species have evolved and changed, and whether this is kind of a steady ongoing process or if things happen in quick bursts. It's a more difficult answer than you might expect with this. Um, to back up just a little bit, when we discuss this, when we talk about the history of evolution for a, for a species or for a group of species, we refer to that as a phylogeny. So we might talk about the phylogeny of humans kind of being like, almost like our family tree. And so we have a, a chart here showing several related species, and this could be considered a phylogeny for any one of these, where we're seeing the lines showing um, branching off of new groups forming. And as we go back downward down this line, we're going back in time. As we go back in time, we can see these different lines linking up into a common ancestor. And also on this particular chart, they're showing certain traits appearing. So we can see that something like lungs appeared after fish had branched off from the others in this group here, but before all of the different um, land animals in the group had, had branched apart from each other. So again, that's called a phylogeny. And it's sometimes called an evolutionary tree, or some people call it a phylogenic tree. But the tree shows the relationships very much like a family tree that you might have with like your parents and grandparents and cousins and things like that on, on a tree for you. Now, when we have the, the branching tree, another name for the term for when we show those branches of this is sometimes called a cladogram. A clade, or sometimes actually pronounced a clad, is a group of related organisms. And so a picture showing these groups is often referred to as a cladogram. And the place that it shows um, different species splitting off from each other is called um, a cladogenesis region. To genesis, genesis means to form something and to form a clad. We can see here in this particular one, even though we don't have all the details showing of which species these are, anytime you see a split like this of branching off, that'd be a cladogenesis. Here's another cladogenesis. And then the areas where it's not splitting, where there's a straight line such as here, or a fairly straight line, Whereas in through here, it's called an anagenesis, when you're not creating new, new species. And so what these pictures show is, again, over time, when speciation has taken place and splitting off has occurred, and when species are more stable and kind of forming just changes, but still the same species. Obviously, species can evolve without forming new species also, just the species may change, and that'd be kind of an angled line. Usually an angle means a change, and more vertical lines mean it's staying approximately the same. That's usually how we draw these. Now, as we talk about the rate of this change, there are two different models, and these models kind of disagree with each other a little bit. One model is called gradualism, and gradualism says that all these changes in species are very slow changes. It's a bunch of little changes over very, very long periods of time leading to what we see as big changes. So going from something like a small you know, mouse-sized mammal to something like an elephant over you know, something like you know, 70 million years would be something that would be a whole bunch of very, very tiny changes over that very, very long period of time. The other model is called punctuated equilibrium. Now, punctuation in language is like the starts and stops, and equilibrium is when things are, are being maintained fairly stable. Punctuated equilibrium is that basic idea of evolution being things kind of starting and stopping, the evolution kind of starting and stopping, where changes occur very quickly all at once, and then they become stable for a while. So there's equilibrium, quick change, equilibrium again, and so on. And, and the funny thing is, it's tough for us to imagine what those bursts of brief change might be. Although, if you start thinking about things like catastrophes that happened in the past, asteroids slamming into the planet or something like that, or, or a mass extinction of some sort, you can pretty easily figure how there might be some quick changes afterwards in the species that survive. Now, we've always kind of visualized evolution as being more of a gradual type of change, but it turns out when we look at the fossil record, most fossil evidence really seems to, sh to show that punctuated equilibrium is the, the way it normally takes place. So we usually figure now at this point in, in modern times, we figure that probably punctuated equilibrium is the more common way, although there may be times of gradualism. Maybe those times that seem to be fairly stable still are filled with some gradual changes that are taking place at those time periods. 
and we need to talk next about extinctions. You really can't talk about evolution at all without um, understanding the fact that some species just simply don't make it, and that's where extinctions come from. Now, again, we have two types of extinctions. One type is what are called background extinctions. These are just simply species that just over time haven't evolved enough to, to fit into their environment and just have died off. And this happens all the time. Today, I'm sure there are going to be species becoming extinct somewhere in the world. And this is probably true just about every day through all of life's history, that species just simply become extinct. We have a lot of species. There are always new species forming through speciation. Old ones sometimes don't make it. That's as opposed to what we call a mass extinction, which is when there's some key event which doesn't just knock out a few species, but wipes out um, not only species, but even maybe something like um, families or classes or orders. You know, these other taxonomic levels we have when we talk about how we organize species to, to classify them. You may wipe out a whole big group, like, um, you know, obviously, probably the example that comes to most people's minds is the end of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. That would be definitely a mass extinction. And we don't think this is just the dinosaur is not fitting into their environment, we think the environment drastically changed all at once, leading to that mass extinction. Now I want to show you a couple of graphs showing this. Um, on the vertical axis here we have the number of families. If you remember in classification we have, um, we have the domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So this is the family level we're looking at, and this is time. We're looking at roughly the last, last half billion years on the planet. What we see is a general trend of, over time, more families. We started with, with fewer families, and in modern times we have quite a few more, but it's not a nice steady line. The line goes up quickly in some places, and then periodically there are these drops. Well, these drops are mass extinctions. The one I mentioned with the dinosaurs right here 65 million years ago was a, a pretty good mass extinction, but you can see, in terms of history on the planet, it's not that huge. Here, roughly 250 million years ago, we had about half of the families on the earth get wiped out. Now, we're not talking half of families of people, remember, this is you know, a quarter of a billion years ago, there were no people at this time. We're talking over half of the families of organisms, half the families of species being wiped out, where whole groups of organisms never existed again. Something pretty major happened at that point. I'll show you the same thing on another graph here. This is showing again number of families and time again for the same rough half million years. You see again the same trend. Here they've kind of targeted these mass extinctions with little kind of bullseyes here. Now most geologists, most paleontologists refer to the five mass extinctions of the past. And you can see those targeted here. One, two, three, four. These are pretty close together. The dinosaur one here. This graph shows a sixth one, which is current times. It's kind of scary to think about the fact that we actually are plotting ourselves in a, a mass extinction brought about through human activity as a, a major event in the environment. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on next semester. Now, anytime you have any extinction, especially if you have a mass extinction, you end up with an area where there's, there's kind of an open spot available for species to move in. And whenever you have an extinction, after that, there seems to be a burst of evolutionary change. That seems to be one of those punctuated times in the punctuated equilibrium rate of change. It's due to something we call adaptive radiation. Now, what adaptive radiation is, is when you have a lot of microevolution happening all at once after an extinction. The reason for this is the niche concept we have from ecology. If you remember niches, a niche is kind of the, the role that a species plays in its environment. Um, what it eats, what eats it, where it lives, you know, habitat issues, all, all those things combine to form a niche. Well, if there's suddenly a niche available, species that already are in the area may very rapidly go through an evolution to kind of fill up that niche. And what we end up seeing is an area, we, we refer to this sometimes as adaptive zones, where there's this region where species are very rapidly adapting to take on all those different niches. And probably the most famous example of this from evolution would be Darwin's finches on the Galapagos Islands when he was on his tour of the world and he stopped in on the Galapagos Islands. He saw all these different species of finch that all seemed to be closely related and all seemed to be very similar to a mainland finch in South America. But what he figured and what we still believe today is that that single species came over and there were all these niches available on these brand new volcanic islands and they very quickly split off to, to take up all those available niches. So that's our discussion on speciation. Bring any questions you have to class, and I hope you have a great day.